O gracious Christ, as we prepare to enter the mystery of these three most holy days, as you command us to love one another, illume our minds and hearts with the hope and promise of your passion, death, and resurrection. Amen. Please be seated. How many of you have taken a hike? Oh, perhaps I should rephrase that. How many of you have taken a journey on foot, a, a long walk on a rustic path or a trail, one that had some uphills and downhills and twists and turns, one that you had to be careful on not to trip or turn an ankle? My friend Diane had such a journey. Recently, she traveled to Peru to hike the Sacred Valley in Machu Picchu. Her hike included 3,000 stone steps, all cut into a mountain that were different heights and widths, some smooth, some sharp, all requiring concentration to navigate and not fall. My friend was on the trail for five long days in a dry and dusty, high altitude environment. It was difficult to breathe and to keep hydrated. And at night, as soon as her boots were off, she fell into her sleeping bag, unsure that she could make it another day. But my friend did make it to Machu Picchu. She had an intense commitment to establish this life goal, and she did. When she returned to Minnesota, her feet were a mess. They were sore and swollen and bruised and blistered. And her expensive leather hiking boots, though badly scuffed and even torn up in a few places, were a lifeline for her. She couldn't have made that trek without them. Those boots became an icon of sorts, a testimony that even with the odds not in her favor, she endured and made an incredible flesh and blood, physical and spiritual journey one that for her was life-changing. Tonight's psalm and the three readings from Exodus and 1 Corinthians and John are all about life-changing events as well. All require flesh and blood, physical and spiritual journeys with the odds not in favor. Now in Exodus, the Israelites who had lived under the enslavement of Egypt are about to be set free. They are guided by God. They prepare a meal of lamb. They eat the meal, dressed for a journey with sandals on their feet and staff in hand, and they eat hurriedly as God has directed. Exodus says, it is the Passover of the Lord. For the Israelites, life would forever be changed. They would be released from bondage through their faith and their belief in God. And yet, their journey wouldn't be easy. They had flesh and blood in their journey, and things didn't always go well. And they stepped off the path sometimes. They doubted God. They lost faith. They wandered in the desert, we're told, for 40 years. And yet, a faithful God led them through the sacred valley to the promised land, a life-changing event. And in 1 Corinthians, the disciples of Jesus also experience a life-changing event as the Passover meal concludes. Having observed and remembered that God in covenant with the Israelites freed the Jewish people, Jesus offers a new covenant the embodiment of God within us. This is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. A life-changing event for the disciples another flesh and blood journey, another journey that would not be easy. 
And then we come to tonight's gospel reading, where before the Passover meal, Jesus washes the feet of his disciples. These followers of Jesus have been trekking with him, walking with him as he healed people, fed the hungry, opposed oppression, rose Lazarus from the dead. And imagine how many miles Jesus and his disciples walked in the course of their journey. And none of them were wearing spendy hiking boots. In fact, they weren't wearing boots at all. Instead, they were lucky if they were wearing sandals made from animal hides with scrap leather ties that laced to their feet and ankles. They walked in body and spirit through dry desert land and over rocky paths and up to mountaintops and down into towns, and they shared space in close quarters where there was no indoor plumbing and forget about showers or bathtubs. Sometimes Jesus and his friends slept, slept rough, finding a place in a field or by the sea, walking, walking, walking. So imagine the toll it took on their feet. In tonight's gospel reading on Monday, Thursday, the Jesus who walked into Jerusalem with his disciples for Passover and all that was to come next has walked right into our midst. On this night, as we remember Monday, Thursday, Jesus gathered with his friends and he washed their feet. He put a towel around his waist, he knelt down, and despite the initial objections of Peter, washed the feet of his friends, a task that would have been designated for a household servant. Mary Noel Missioner Kim Fisher says, this is the image that Christ leaves us with today, the washing of the calloused, rough, dirty feet an act of servanthood. Jesus models that action for us. The Christ, the Son of God, knelt in the presence of his disciples and washed their feet. And Jesus kneels in our presence too, as an example for us to serve each other. Now here's where the name Monday Thursday comes in. The word Monday is Latin for mandate. And here is Jesus' mandate to his friends and to us. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. And you should also love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples. So if you have love for one another, you are my disciples. A life-changing event. But I think, too, there's a second mandate implied, but subtler than the first, and here it is. Along with loving one another and serving one another, we also have to be open to receiving love and kindness from each other, to allow ourselves to bless and serve and bless each other when we are in need. Because to do so is to see the presence of Christ in ourselves as well as in each other. We have to be willing to receive Christ's blessing in serving and being served. Author Jan Richardson says, a blessing isn't finished until we let it do its work within us and then pass it along. An offering grounded in the love of Jesus that goes on to speak of this night. Yet we cannot do this as the disciples could not do it unless we first allow ourselves to simply receive a blessing as it is offered, a gift, a promise, a sign of the world made whole. Tonight, I invite you in body or in spirit to have your feet washed. I invite you in body or spirit to untie those heavy hiking boots that you've been trekking in for a lifetime and let your feet bear witness to how far you've traveled. Your feet tell your life's journey, a trek made by putting 
one foot in front of the other, just like Jesus did. Shake off the mud. Let the dust be rinsed away. Let all that baggage go with it. And then put your boots back on and lace them up and go out into the world and get back on the path, just as Jesus instructed his disciples to do. Take nourishment for the journey in Christ's body and blood. Live into Christ's mandate. Love one another. Trek with Jesus. Walk with each other. Accompany the Christ in each of us. The we of Christ, the us that suffers under Pontius Pilate, is crucified, died, and is buried. And yet in Christ, and in loving one another, we too defy the odds and rise again. Amen.